In this lecture, we study about uh, convolution coding, and uh, in the next lecture, we learn about convolution decoding. Convolution decoder is unlike linear block codes and cyclic codes, in which we have the one-to-one -one mapping of the message and the code word. <clears throat> K tuple message is mapped with the N tuple code word. But uh, in convolution codes, we don't have the fixed length of the message. We need to truncate it somewhere. For example, the input of the convolution coder can be a one bit. For example, M1. M2, MI. So we consider only one bit input to the convolution encoder and that would K is equal to one. And that one bit is encoded into N bit code word. <clears throat> so this is called the branch word. So every ith message, every ith message is encoded by ui branch word, and that branch word have n bits of message. And uh, in general, we write it with uh, u1i to uni coded bits, where n is the number of coded bits and i is the message width. And the rate of the convolution coder is a is one by n. So for every input bit, we have a branch word, u1, u2, u3, and ui. <clears throat> so after encoding the message, we modulate the signal and send over the channel. The channel introduces the uh, errors and when it demodulated we get the erroneous received sequence <clears throat> this erroneous received sequence uh, will be encoded correctly by the convolution coder and uh, uh, from that we get the correct message so <clears throat> In linear block codes, we have only two parameters. One is the length of the encoded bit stream, and one is the input data stream. And the third parameter, constraint length, is not given. But here we consider the constraint length. Constraint length defines that how many previous bits we consider or taken into account to encode the message. For example, if the constraint length is k, then k minus one are the previous bits on which the message is encoded. And k is the current bit. So k minus one previous bits and k is the current bit over which we decide the n encoded bit of message. So if the message is of k tuple, if we consider that the input uh, message is k bits and it's called k tuple, so and the constraint length is k, then it means that uh, we have k tuple times k bits shift registers. So at time t1, we move uh, in first k bits, and in the next time we move next k bits and in the next time we move next k bits. 
for example, if the constraint length is three, so we move three k tuple messages into the shift register, and the number of uh, shift registers is three times k tuple. So, <clears throat> how many number of adders here? We also have. Uh, the number of adder is equal to the n modulo two adders. It doesn't depend upon the factor kk, but here uh, it, uh, the number of adder is uh, k times k, and the encoded bit is from u1 to ui, <clears throat> depending on the corresponding message M1 to Mi. <clears throat> Here we cannot truncate the message because it's the ongoing bit stream and it keeps on moving into the shift registers. So we cannot truncate it, but for uh, to determine the code rate, we need to truncate it somewhere. <clears throat> the input message bit string we need to truncate it somewhere to find the code rate and uh, <clears throat> uh, we need to add some extra zeros to move the contents of the shift registers so how many zeros we need to move the contents of the shift registers if you just recall the cyclic codes so you can easily determine that it's k time k minus one uh, zeros moved into the shift register to move all the contents of the shift registers. So these extra bits will uh, reduce the code rate from k by n to uh, uh, k by n uh, k by n or less than k by n but if the bit stream is long enough then it approaches near to k by n <clears throat> For example, if we are considering 300 bit message, then the code rate is approximately equal to K by N. So as I said earlier, that convolution and an encoder does not need segmentation of the data, but we need to segment it to find the code rate of the signal. So in this, we cannot encode the message with a single code word. It depends on the previous data. And as it has the previous data, it means the encoder has some memory and it is called a finite state machine. We called it a finite state machine because it has the finite number of states, a uh, finite number of possible states and which the encoder moves and we can represent it with the state diagram. So the convolution encoder can be represented with the state diagram as well. So the effective code rate is less than k by n but it approaches to k by n when its length is k by n. So there are several representation of the encoder. One is the pictorial representation of the encoder in which we shows the connection of the shift registers by the modulo two adders. <clears throat> Here we have, uh, we are considering that the K tuples, K is equal to one right and the constraint length k is equal to three 
So if we are considering the constraint length is equal to three, so we have three shift registers. It means that we encode the data on the basis of two previous bits, right? And we have only one input bit. So if one bit gets in, so we get the two bits at the output, one from the one modulo to adder and second from the second modulo to adder. So in this way, uh, its rate seems to be one by two. And later we see that if we have three message bits, so we have 10 output bits because we append two zeros with the message. So it means uh, these two zero will not be the actual data. So the actual data is three. So the code rate will be three by 10, which is less than one by two. But if we are considering 300 bits, so if we are considering 300 bits and we have only two bits extra, so uh, so we have uh, 300 divided by 604. So this will approximately equal to the rate of one by two. So the truncation of the data will be depend on us to find the code rate. In general, we there is no need to truncate the data in convolution encoding. So how we represent this? Uh, modulo to adder connections. So this will be represented by the generator polynomial. And that is in fact is represented by two generator polynomials. Uh, and that two generator polynomials is uh, just uh, like the cyclic codes in which we have uh, the connection polynomial is one plus x plus x2 and here it is one plus x2. So this is the generator polynomials of the condition encoder. Now the third type is in fact is the state diagram. So there is two possibility uh, initially. Initially that we have the input bit zero or we have the input bit one. So what will be the output if the input bit is zero? So the output will be zero, zero. So it means that if uh, we are in a state of zero, zero, so we will move to state zero, zero with output zero, zero. And we move to state one, zero, if we have uh, input one and the output will be one one. So in fact here, uh, the branch, uh, the one is representing the input one and one one is representing the input, uh, the output. One one representing the output. Here zero zero representing the output. <clears throat> and zero is the input. And this is the state of the shift registers. Later on, we will study that how we plot this state diagram. But general rule is that when we consider zero as the input, so we consider the solid lines. And if we have the one input, we have the dashed lines. <clears throat> so we discriminate the input bit by uh, solid lines in case of zero input bit and dashed lines in case of one input bit. <clears throat> so this is the state diagram representation. We will study uh, this convolution coder with uh, k is equal to one input bit and constraint length three throughout this study. 
so there is a tree diagram representation as well tree diagram representation uh, elaborates more clearly what's going on with the message so if we have uh, uh, one input so we go down if we have a uh, zero input we move up and uh, that is in fact is the output that represents the output of the order so every time we moves uh, for example it's the first time p1 and uh, here the next time t2 and t2 time we have uh, two possibilities uh, either we have the 00 output and 11 output and then we have uh, two possibility at each stage and then we have four branches and similarly at time t3 we have uh, eight possibilities and at t4 times we have 16 and at t5 times we have 32 possibilities so depending on the input zero or one of the conversion order so according to the possibilities movie on the tree depending on the input message we move in this way over the conversion order right or we move some other ways any other possibilities uh, in this tree so we can move anyway and we will learn later how we have uh, proceed with this example so there is a complex structure which is a trellis structure in this the four states are uh, represented by uh, here uh, this is a state one state z uh, state zero state one state two and state three and the every time we have the possibility here we have the two only two possibility we have the zero input and we have the zero zero output we have the one input and we have the one one output so at the next time uh, t2 time we have the four possibilities and uh, at the t3 time we have the eight possibilities and at the t4 time we have 16 possibilities and at the t5 time we have 32 uh, possibilities <clears throat> but here we uh, every time we represent the uh, in the trail is we represent the only uh, 16 possibilities uh, only 16 branches emanating from the uh, register depending on the input of the register. <coughs> trellis diagram is helpful in decoding as well <coughs> and tree diagram is also helpful in decoding uh, convolution encoded message. So impulse response of the convolution coder. Initially, we have seen a convolution coder here. Uh, so I'll just uh, take this uh, this convolution coder here. And if we want to see the impulse response of this message, so we will consider an uh, one input with two appended zeros so if we get the one input so we have the two appended zero to flush on this one out of the shift registers so first the one moves here and we take the output so the output will be one one and we move zero one zero we will have the output we will have the output uh, one zero 
and 0, 0, 1. So we are moving the contents of the shift register 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1. This is to find the impulse response of the convection coolant. So the output will be 1, 1. The output will be 1, 0. And the output will be 1, 1. So the input sequence will be encoded as that 1, 0, 0 will be encoded as 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So how can we write this? For example, we have a message 1, 0, 1. So we have the impulse response of 1 is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And for 0, we have the impulse response 0, 0, 0. And for 1, we have the impulse response 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So we just uh, modulo to sum this. So we will get the desired output. So this is the 10 bit output. If we have this 3 bit input of the message of the convolution encoder. <clears throat> right. Now this is in fact is the generator polynomial. In generator polynomial we have considered that we have the uh, first connection a of the modulo to adder is 1 plus x plus x2 and the second connection is 1 plus x2. So we multiply the message uh, 101 which is 1 plus x square with g1 of x and the message 101 uh, which is 1 plus x square with the g2 of x and here we have m of x g1 of x and m2 g2 of x and this m1 m of x g of 1 of x interlaced by m of x g2 of x so we multiply the two polynomials, the message polynomial with the connection polynomial with the generator polynomial, and we will get this output, right? And we multiply with the second generator polynomial, we will get this output. Here x2 is missing, so we will mark 0. And here x2, x3, and x is missing, so we'll mark this as 0. Now the coded message is in fact is uh, 1, 1, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1. First we write uh, the m of x, g1 of x message and then we write interlaced with m of x, g2 of x. So that is 1, 1 or the output will be in binary form is so the code word polynomial is in fact uh, is written in this form and the output of the coder is written in this form. <clears throat> so here you can see that uh, the message is 101. Message is 101. So first we have the one input. So this one zero exclusive or one and one zero exclusive or one. So we will get the output one. So we will mark this output one. And here one zero exclusive or one. So we'll get this output one. So that result is important. If the input is zero, 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 and we will get one at the input, so we will get 1, 1 at the output. The register contents will be 1, 0, 0. So <clears throat> we can see here, there is the present state. The present state is in fact is uh, 0, 0. The present state is 0, 0. 
the present state is 0, 0, and the next state is 1, 0. So the second and third bit will be considered as the present state, and the next state uh, is, for example, it is the present state at t1, and that is the next state at time t2. Right? So it means if we have one in the input, so the initial state is zero, zero. So if we will go from state zero, zero to one, zero. So we will move from the state zero, zero to one, zero. So what will be the input? The input is one. And what will be the output? The output will be output will be one one. Output will be one one. So the output will be one one. So similarly, we do it with the next step. Next zero moves in, and uh, when zero moves in, so we will get the output one and zero we will get the output one and zero so the initial uh, state is one zero and it will go to zero one so from one zero to uh, one zero to it moves to zero one so from one zero it moves to zero one but with the zero input bit so it moves this way. So if the zero is the input, so the output will be one zero and it will move from state one zero to zero one. Similarly, uh, we have the next step. Next step here is that we will remove one. Now the complete message moves into the register. It is one zero one and we will get the output 0, 0. So, <clears throat> so we have the state 0, 1 and we move to the state 1, 0. 0, 1 to 1, 0. So 0, 1 to 1, 0, we move back to the state 1, 0 with one input bit and 0, 0 at the output. So again, now we need two zeros to flush the contents of the register two zeros because the constraint length is three because three shift registers. <clears throat> so we need two zeros. So first we move first zero and we take the output one zero, right? Right? So the state is one zero and we will move to zero one. So one zero to zero one, one zero to zero one. Uh, one zero to zero one. Again, we move back one zero to zero one with zero input and one zero at the output. And then now the final, finally, we have zero at the input and uh, we have the state zero one to zero zero. So now we have zero one from this zero one, we move to zero zero with zero input. So zero input and we have the one one So you can understand this uh, in a more easier way that uh, <clears throat> you have the input bit uh, stream is uh, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, and you will move the contents, the register contents will be changed and uh, this is the uh, 
टी स्टेट इज जीरो जीरो दिस जीरो जीरो एंड द टी आई प्लस वन स्टेट इज वन जीरो सो दिस इज जीरो जीरो एंड दिस इज वन जीरो टी आई प्लस वन स्टेट एंड वी हैव द आउटपुट वन जीरो वन वन सो इन डेट वे वी कैन हैव द डायग्राम स्टेट डायग्राम ऑफ दिस मैसेजेस so by sketching this one one zero one one we can have the complete state diagram <clears throat> so in case of tree you know that when we gets one so we moves down and we get zero we move up so first we get one so we will move down <clears throat> and then we get uh, zero we will move up then we will get one we will move down and then we will get zero we will move up and then we will get zero we will move up so this is in fact is the tree diagram of the convolution model so the output corresponding output will be represented by the branch the first time we get zero we will get one one and the second time we get zero we will get output 10 and similarly the next time we get one so we will get output 00 and similarly for the next two zeros we will get the output 10 and 11 so we will have the output 11 10 00 10 and 11 that is represented by the tree diagram so this is the method we encode the convolution uh, uh order and we also learn the representation one is the tree representation trellis representation and the uh, other one is the pictorial representation uh, or the uh, state diagram representation so these three are important uh, in using convolution decoding as well so here i finish my lecture and the next time we learn convolution decoding